For whatever reason, lately I've been thinking about old cases that haven't gone anywhere. Suzanne Morphew, like, hello, uh, what is going on there? But also, today's case with Shanquilla Robinson is just one that I haven't heard much about, and it just breaks my heart that there hasn't been a lot of information about this case. If this was my daughter, my niece, my friend, I would want some answers. And to catch it on videotape, which we will get into, why am I <laughs> spilling everything, but just nobody's talking about it. So anyways, to sum it up, in October of 2022, seven university friends traveled to the resort town of Cabo St. Lucas, Mexico, for a, a week-long vacation. This trip to paradise, however, took a very dark turn when one member of the group mysteriously died less than 24 hours of their arrival. I just want to take a few moments to thank today's sponsor, Timo. Timo is a one-stop sh online shopping platform that absolutely has it all. As I mentioned in my last Timu sponsorship, I was introduced to Timo from my sister who did her flowers herself, but she bought all of them from Timu. Ever since, I have been hooked on the great products for the low. Here are some things that I bought. I was buying a lot for Easter and some just other high quality household items. Amazingly affordable. I have to admit that I bought these plushies for Easter, but I will be keeping them up all year round. Timo is offering up to a $100 credit bundle. To get started, download Timu app, which is linked below, and I will also have a pinned comment to get a $100 coupon bundle. And also use my code here on the screen in the app. But again, I will have everything linked. Now let's get on to today's video. Today, the young woman's family that we're going to be talking about continues to fight for the truth what really happened to Shanquilla Robinson. If you are new here, my name is Kim. Introduce yourself down below. There's a good group of rock stars here. But Shanquilla was born on January 9th, 1997. Shanquilla was a 25-year-old Charlotte, North Carolina native with a bright future ahead of her. Shanquilla's mother, Shalamandra described her daughter as a good person with a heart of gold, a person who loved life and those around her. The ambitious and hardworking young woman graduated from Winston-Salem State University in 2018. And by 2022, Shanquilla already had two successful businesses, a hair braiding services for uh, children called Exquisite Babies and an online clothing boutique. With her talents and her personality, there was no reason for anyone to doubt that Shanquilla would achieve great things in life. So what happens to Shanquilla is just so much more devastating. Shanquilla loved to travel. She went to Jamaica. She went to Nevada, Las Vegas. She really liked to travel. But later that year, Shanquilla and six friends were planning a trip to Cabo St. Lucas, Mexico to celebrate the birthdays of two people in this group, Dejanay Jackson and Nazir Wiggins. The four others were Khalil Cook, Malik St. Patrick Dyer, Winter Essence Donovan, and Elise Michelle Hyatt. While the exact dynamics between the people in the friend group are just not known, they all met in college. But Shanquilla apparently was the last person entering the group. So she was more detached than the other group. They had known each other longer. But... There was one friend, Khalil, who often spent time at the Robinson family home. They had been friends for a long time. He and Shanquilla had known each other for over five years and seemed to have a much closer relationship than she had with anybody else in the group. But as the later events would show, 
Not even Khalil was there for Shanquilla when she most needed a friend. On October 28, 2022, Shanquilla and five others flew to Mexico and checked into a rental luxury apartment at the resort town of Cabo St. Lucas called Villa Linda 32. This five bedroom, five bath, 6,049 square feet Hacienda style vacation rental has marble flooring, a pool with a swim up bar, a jacuzzi, a rooftop deck with views of the Sea of Cortez, a fire pit, and even a private chef. Like this was baller status, a trip of a lifetime. Based on the, the listing on villaway.com, nights at Villa Linda 32 starts at about 1300, but it can be as much as $3,000. Meaning if we're going with the cheapest rate, a week at this location would have cost over $1,100 per person for a seven night group. And that doesn't include any other like social stuff, food, booze, you know, anything like that. Nazir Wiggins reportedly arrived at the villa the following day. Shanquilla and her uh, friends, do we call them friends? Maybe travel partners. We'll call them travel partners because they were not her friends. But anyways, we'll move on. But they seem to have a good time during their first day and night at this villa, Shanquilla was posting a lot of pictures and videos on her Instagram story showing that she was having a good time. I mean, she was in the pool and, it, you know, it, it just looked like it was off to a good start. Of course, you cannot judge online, you know, but whatever. It just appeared that everything was calm, cool, collective, and they were going to have a really good time. However, one story from that night did raise some eyebrows. In the video posted at 8.45 p.m., Shanquilla is seen lying on a hammock, passed out and not reacting to Khalil, who was the one filming. Khalil can be heard saying, Got our first day, buddy. Buddy, 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 she too full. <laughs> While he was laughing and clearly joking around at the time, Khalil's words would become shockingly literal just hours later. Which, you know, I don't necessarily know if that post meant anything, but man, what a thing to say. Later that night, Shanquilla woke up and according to Salamandra, her mother was feeling great, having a good time. The two spoke on the phone, so that's how she knew this. But she didn't know was that was going to be her last time that she would talk to her daughter. She told me they had a chef. They was getting ready to eat. They was eating tacos, some salad or something. And um, I said, well, OK, I love you. Have a good night and I will talk to you tomorrow. And of course, she would go on to say, I would never talk to my child again. She never made it back home. The following day on October 29th, something had changed at the Villa Linda 32. Shanquilla again posted a video on her Instagram story. Y'all, it don't take that long to get naked. It don't take that long to get naked, hoes. Where y'all at? She told me I'm gonna keep it hot. You gonna keep it hot? What? I'm gonna keep my hot bathing suit that I don't wanna wear because it's too slow. They, <laughs> what Go said, they croup. Yeah. <laughs> the, the one that's like mediocre is in my chicken, so I can't wear <laughs> The video definitely gives a weird feeling, but Shanquilla, however, doesn't think that anything strange is going on. She sounded happy and excited, like someone that was looking forward to having a great time and going swimming. Then something went horribly wrong. Shortly after 2 p.m., Salamandra received a call from Khalil saying that Shanquilla had been unconscious in the room of the villa and they had requested a doctor to come check her out. Apparently, Khalil told 
Salamandra that her daughter had been drinking too much and was likely suffering from alcohol poisoning, which as a mother, you do not want to hear that at all. You're so far away. Your daughter's sick. You can't be there. You're trusting somebody else's word. So I'm sure that this was not, uh, obviously, it was not a fun conversation for Salamandra. The call to the American Medical Center was placed at 2.13 p.m. and the doctor arrived at the villa around 3 p.m. She reportedly, the doctor was a female, found uh, Shanquilla in a stable condition, she read report, but dehydrated, disoriented, verbally unresponsive. The doctor then recommended that Shanquilla be admitted to the hospital to ensure a safe recovery. But strangely, her so-called friends, travel companions, insisted that she be treated at the villa. Nope, she's not going to the hospital. We're not going to get her hydrated because the doctor said she was dehydrated. We're not going to fill her with fluids and help her get better. No, no, no. We're just going to do it here. So at about 4.13 p.m., Shanquilla suffered a seizure, meaning her body suddenly stiffened and she was also uh, spontaneously defected and had trouble breathing. At this point, it was clear Shanquilla's life was in danger. And so they did end up calling an ambulance finally at around 4.20 p.m. Meanwhile, the young woman's pulse kept dropping until she suffered a cardiac arrest. The paramedics worked tirelessly to try to resuscitate her. Shanquilla had 14 rounds of CPR and was given five doses of an adrenaline in addition to six discharges of you know, the defibrillator. But all the efforts were in vain because at 5.57 p.m., this is dinner time. This is 5.50 p.m. She's been there one day. Shanquilla Robinson was declared dead. How did this happen? Based on the conversation with Khalil and the doctor's notes, the Los Cabos police concluded that Shanquilla had died of alcohol poisoning and she had died two hours and 45 minutes after the doctor was called uh, to the residence. According to the report, there was no internal or external injuries on Shaquilla's body. Nothing suggesting something way more sinister may have happened at the Villa Linda 32. After the shocking turn of events, Khalil informed Salamandra of her daughter's passing and took Shanquilla's belongings with him back to the United States. Basically, after what happened to Shanquilla, the rest of the group left as soon as they possibly could. There was no talk of staying in Mexico or helping Shanquilla's parents with getting her body back home. Instead, Khalil and several others of the group visited Salamandra and Bernard Robinson, which was her dad, at their home in Charlotte to give their condolences and give them, you know, Shinkula stuff. The strange thing is, Salamandra later said in an interview that every single person she talked to about her daughter's death told a different story of what had happened. When they got well, ride back to Charlotte, they came over to the house to visit and tell us what, what had happened. Mm. What was that conversation like? What did they tell you exactly? Well, they told us it was alcohol poison. And mm. um, we, you know, questioned each one of them because we had heard different. We had got a call saying that they was over there fighting her. It was no mm. such thing as alcohol poison. So we started asking each one of them questions about the situation. And um, they um, denied and said there was never a fight. You know, it mm. was alcohol poison. Some of the group uh, said that they had found her unconscious on the floor. Another one claimed that they found her in bed, while another person said that uh, uh, she was found in a chair. Furthermore, some of Shanquilla's travel companions claimed the discovery had actually been made by a maid, and the apartment concierge called the doctor. It seemed 
that the only detail that never changed was the com the the claim that Shanquilla died of alcohol poisoning. Like nothing sinister had happened. It must have been alcohol poisoning. She was on the floor. She was in a chair. A maid called. I the whole group is just a hot mess. On November tenth, twenty twenty two. The results of the autopsy revealed Shanquilla Robinson died of severe spinal cord injury in an atlas luxation, a condition in which instability or excessive movement is present between the first two vertebrae within the neck. In other words, the young woman had died because of a broken neck, which should have happened, according to the autopsy report, within like 15 minutes. This goes completely against what the travel companion's story and the claim that Shanquilla was treated by a doctor for over an hour. How did this doctor it not know this. Salamandra told the press her daughter's body also showed obvious signs of trauma, a knot on her head, a bruised face, a swollen eye, a busted lip, although the police reported no trauma. Shanquilla was brought back to Charlotte on November 12th and her funeral service was held a week later. Interestingly enough, Straight after the autopsy report was made public, Khalil and the rest of the group vanished off the face of the earth. No more visits, no more talking to Shanquilla's parents. Done, gone, zippo. The sudden silence alone is suspicious, but the most shocking development in this case occurred on November 15th at 8.34 p.m. when a Twitter user named BK at... Pretty Brooklyn uh, uploaded a video. Okay. Okay. Quilla, can you at least fight back? No. Why, why is she not fighting? At least something. At least fight back, something. Get up, bro. Get up. Uh -uh. The 22nd video was filmed at Villa Linda 32 and it shows Shanquilla being punched, yanked, thrown, kicked, and kneed in the head. All the while, Shanquilla refuses to fight back. It was against the young woman's kind of nature to hurt uh, somebody, even though she was getting hurt. Naturally, people were outraged after the release of this shocking video. Shanquilla's parents and the public couldn't understand why nobody helped the young woman, but instead filmed the incident. The video doesn't show what happened before the fight or give an explanation of why Shanquilla was so viciously attacked, but she can be seen slumped on the ground as the video ends. Together with the autopsy report, the footage painted a completely different story of how Shanquilla actually died. The following day on November 16th, the state attorney general's office at Baja California, Sur, Mexico, reopened the investigation into Shaquilla's death. And on November 23rd, an arrest court ordered uh, uh, relating to a familicide charge was issued against a person identified as the, quote, direct aggressor in the case in the person on the video. Although authorities have not officially named her, it's known they are talking about Dejanay Jackson. The Attorney General for Baja California has said that Shanquilla's death was not the result of a quarrel, but, quote, a direct aggravation that this person made, unquote. To explain the charge, familicide is a gender-related killing of a woman only because she is a woman, a crime recognized only in 16 countries. And in Mexico, homicide can be considered familicide when there is evidence of a sexual violence prior to the victim's death. A uh, sentimental, affective, or trusting relationship with the predator. 
it's it's kind of confusing because we don't really follow that here, but it's the information that I have. Now, the development is exciting, right? Like there's going to be some justice for Shinquilla, but it may take a long time before anything happens because nothing seems to be happening. Because Shinquilla was killed in Mexico, the U.S. Justice Department has to first investigate and then forward the extradition request to the State Department for final approval. Although the U.S. can decide not to give up the case, which is also investigated now by the FBI. The two countries have a 1978 extradition treaty in place, and the request is likely approved. Still, the process is a long criminal defense lawyer uh, quoted that it could take a long time. But what I want to know is why nothing's really happened and what was the motive and well, allegedly, and you know, well, we don't really like to talk in rumors, but allegedly, Shanquilla was robbed of $10,000 by her so called friends after her death, that she had paid for the entire trip. So maybe they were all supposed to pay her back. Uh, is the room? I, I don't know. I think, honestly, I just think it was just a jealousy thing. I think she was a female. She's wanting to get naked in the pool. They see her as a threat. Clearly, there was something. Because you don't spend 24 hours. I could see at the end of the week, you're sick of each other. But the first day, what what is going on? They had to spend the rest of the trip together. What, they, it's so bizarre. These people are just bizarre. It would not be like the first time money makes people forget what being a friend means, but the Robinsons family will file a, a civil lawsuit against her six travel companions who were on this trip to Mexico. The lawsuit will be against the six other travel mates, including the three who lied by omission by failing to disclose that someone had been beating Shanquilla prior to her death. The family lawyer, Sue Ann Robinson, no relation, just the same last name, would, would say that's what they're they're doing or did. There's just not, I couldn't find anything. There's not been an update for a very long time. So I hope that they, they are able to get that to go through because as of today, there is no arrest that has been confirmed in this case, but Shanquilla Robinson's loved ones are one step closer to justice. They're hoping her shocking death is no longer seen as an unfortunate accident, but as a homicide. And hopefully one day her and her family will find the truth of what really happened to her. And with that civil suit, nine times out of 10, People will um, will file that for their loved ones who aren't getting justice in the the mainstream legal system because that it's a less um, it's less formal and once they are guilty in a civil suit once they lose in the civil suit then it's more likely that the prosecutor will pick up the case and take it you know, as a criminal trial, a criminal um, case. So I, I'm hoping that happens. I hope that it brings a lot to light. I think they have a lot of information. But like I said in the beginning, I just could not imagine my loved one on tape being hurt and that person is just walking free. Like what? Heck no, that would be devastating. So devastating. But anyways, thanks so much for watching. That's all I have in this case today. And I will keep you posted if I hear anything new. Have a great day. And remember, if you see something, say something. Bye.